Hello, today we're going to learn how to use a laser cutting machine. For using it, we only need the laser cutting machine. In this case, we're going to learn how to use the Speedy 400, a computer with a Rhino and job control, and a piece of material. In this case, for example, we're going to use play wood of 3mm thickness. So, first of all, we have to turn on the machine. For turning it on, it just uh, rotate this key here. Then you will see that the bed of the machine will go down, so it will reach the end stops. Then we'll have to manually put it back up. Uh, for doing that, we need to use the panel here on the side of the, of the laser. For moving the platform, we use these two keys here, these two arrows for going up and down. It's the platform, not the laser, so when we're going up, it's putting up the bed, okay? So we have to go up to the top. Okay, for loading the material, we have to load it here on top of the laser. But you see that this material is not completely flat. You see that it dances a little bit. So what we have to do is to tape it down, okay? It's very important to put the material that the corners are facing up. So if it's bended a little bit, it has to be bended like this and not like this. Because if it's bended like this, that here is in the middle of the problem. I can tape it here on the sides, but in the middle we, I will have the same problem, yes? Instead, if we, do it, if we do it like this, when I tape down the corners, it will tape down everything, so everything will be flat. Yeah, because it will be like this, and then we straight it up like this. If not, if we do it like this, we tape here, but the material is not flat enough. So, for this, we're going to use paper tape, because as it's paper, the laser will burn it at all. We put some tape here on the corners, mostly. You'll see that the tape sticks very well here on the side. We're gonna use this side panel. You see that this is just moving the laser pointer. For doing the focus, we are gonna use mm, this piece here. And we're gonna hang this small piece here on the laser. This is the focal length. Okay, this is very important to keep this focal length because the laser will cut perfect in this point. Here where it's pretty close to the material, we are gonna stop tapping the button, so like this we don't go up very fast. The material will start going closer and closer to the laser focus tool until it fails. When it fails, then we know that we have the exact point of focus. We take out the focusing tool and we are ready for cutting. The next step, and maybe the most important step, is to turn on the air extraction uh, to the right. Okay. <laughs> For creating our file, we're gonna use Rhino, and from Rhino, we're gonna export it to Job Control. But let's just start with Rhino. In this case, I always like to work with the top view because we're gonna cut from the top, okay? And here, you can import your own files, vector files, or create whatever, okay? In this case, we're gonna make a square, for example, from the origin, let's say it is a square, it's... Mm, 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. Here we have our square. And I'm gonna do also a bigger square, something like this. This is not very accurate, but it's just a test, okay? It's always important to test our materials first. And for testing, I recommend really using square or circles or simple shapes and easy and fast to cut. We have the cut, that is just a normal cut. We have an engrave, that is like a cut, but much more faster, that it's not going through. So like this, it's like a drawing, a drawing a line onto the material. And then we have the raster, that the raster is burning the material pixel by pixel, okay? So for the cut and the engrave, we're using vector files. For the raster, we're using a, a raster file. So perfect, now we're gonna show the three types of aberrations that we talk about. We're gonna do a cut, we're gonna do an engrave, and we're gonna do a raster. For the raster, we can put some letters here.
this town. Mm, here you see that the hello is just a, a, a vector, so what we can do is we can use the command hatch in Rhino, so it will make it solid, and like this we can raster the inset. Cool, so in this case we're gonna cut the, the outer part, make an engraving of this square, and raster the hello. Okay? For this we have to Mm, we have to know which is the ordering that we want to use. The first that we're gonna do is the raster, because we're gonna send the raster as a separate file, and then we're gonna do the cut and the engraving. In this case, we're gonna do first the engraving and then the cut. So for this, what we have is the color code. In this case, what I'm gonna do is the first thing that I wanna do, I will put it in red, that will be the square, and then the other square into blue. We know that the black part is the raster. The raster always uses black things. So, now that we have our design, we can send this file to job control. For doing so, we can print our, our file. Once we print it, here you see the print setup. And this is a very important screen because here is where all the properties we, that we're gonna set happens. No? First of all, we have to make sure that the size is the size of the machine. 1000 millimeters by 600 millimeters. Then uh, here we have this command that is minimized to job size. If we have it unchecked like this, it will send to the machine a whole plate like this. And if we click it, it will, it will send only the lines that we're cutting up. Here we can select the, the material that we're using. In this case, we're using wood and plywood. In this case, let's keep it in standard. And when we're done, we're gonna press this button. Now let's keep seeing the different options. Mm -hmm. What we're gonna send now is a raster output, only the, the black part. Then we're gonna have display color, because like this we are gonna have these lines in different colors. Here we have to make sure that we have selected the top view. You can see that here now our design is in the middle of the plate. And you see here we have the plate. So if we want to move it, just to press move here or right move in the command line. Then we can select the top corner here and we can move it. As we're gonna send first the raster, first of all, we're gonna hide the other lines. For this, I use the command hide. You write hide and press enter. In this case, as it's a raster, we're gonna select raster, print. And this will automatically open job control. So, this is the software of the machine. And here what we see is that we have our plate and here we have the jobs that we send. In this case, our it's called Untitled because we didn't have a title for it. Here you can see the preview. And what we're gonna do now is select the settings of the, of the machine. For this, we can use this button here, or we can go to Settings, Material Template Setup. setup. Here is what we talked about before of the color code. In this case, we only have black, that is for the raster. Then what we have to do here is select, in this case engrave is the raster. Here we have like a default mm, settings for different materials that we test here on the lab. And I recommend to go with these settings as a, by default and then start with these ones, test the material and change them if, if needed. Okay? In this case we're going to use plywood of 3mm, so we're going to see here the default uh, operations. We have the cut, the engraving and different types of raster, uh, of raster with more power. So in this case, for the raster that we're using now, we're gonna do the middle one, for example, and you can see here, the power is 60, the speed is, a, is 100, and the frequency is 1000. For the cut and engraving, for the cut, the power is 60, and the speed is 1.5, and for the engraving, the power is 60, and the speed is 100, okay? The frequency is always 1000. That's because the frequency it's, it comes defined by the materials. So if, we, if we're using um, an organic material, if we do a lot of pulses in, in those types of material, we are, we are gonna end up burning this material. In the case of plastics like acrylics, for example, that are non-organic materials, we prefer to use higher frequencies because like this we will have more pulses and this will, uh, will melt the, the plastic and we will have a, a nicer cut there. Okay, so it's important to know which, which frequency we need to use for each material. So, in this case, we're gonna, for the engraving, as we see in the, in the panel, we're gonna use 60 power, 100 speed, and the frequency 1000. Perfect, we can press OK here. So now that we have all the settings done, we can press right here, that this will connect to the machine. 
once the machine is connected, we can press the play button and the, the file will start cutting. So very important before starting cutting, we need to make sure that we follow these three easy steps. First step, make sure we focus the machine with the focusing tool. Second step is to make sure that we define the parameters of cutting in the software. And third and most important one is to make sure that we have the extraction now. So very important, uh, here we have an emergency stop button that is here. So if we think if we see that anything is going wrong, we can stop the machine just pressing this button. Also, we can stop it from here if we want to just stop the file or from the from the computer. Okay, but it's very important that if we see fire on the material or in the machine, we have to stop it immediately. You're gonna see that in some materials when we're cutting, maybe some small flames get out. This is normal, and if we see that these flames stop in one or two seconds, then we can keep working. But if we see that the flame persists, we have to stop the machine immediately. 